What's good, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Community Voices. Today, we are joined by a man who is not just skilled on the court, but he also is pretty damn styles off the court. He does both really well. I got a couple of design tips from him myself on how to kind of get a little bit fresher um, and improve my basketball skills. I'm, I try. I'm not, I'm not at his level, you know what I mean? But, you know, I have my little pickup stuff. But he's Los Angeles Clipper, shooting guard, small forward, Number 14, Terrence, man, how are you doing? Welcome to Community Voices, man. How you feeling? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for having me. Of course. I appreciate you cutting out time once again out of your busy day. I know you're moving and grooving a lot, so I appreciate you cutting out some time for us to uh, join for episode today. Yeah, no problem. Let's do it. For sure. So I have to start with this. We honestly have a, same, a, a number that's one of my favorite numbers. 7 14 because my birthday. So 14 and 7 are by default my favorite numbers. Mm-hmm. Your jersey number, number 14. Is there a significance to that? What's the, kind of the meaning behind that number to you? And what does that mean to you? Um, yeah. So my grandmother was born on December 14th, and my mother wore 14 um while playing basketball all throughout high school. And then she played Georgetown. She played at Georgetown for college basketball and she wore 14 there. So it's just always been a family number. Oh, yeah. I mean, but that means 14 runs real deep, even more than the birthday. So that's that's fire. Yeah, for sure. So I want to tap in to literally when you helped lead the team to history, uh, made history for the Los Angeles Clippers franchise, led them to the Western Conference Finals. Now, I know it sounded easy in that sentence that I put it, but I know it was nowhere near that. Kawhi goes down before the series. You find out you're starting. You put on this like blackout performance, career high, 39 points. I mean, you were like seven for 10 from three, clinched it, sent Utah home, hit the Western Conference Finals. Can you kind of describe to me what was it like in that moment to just kind of, you know, just play that level and to just show out like that and really like, you know, see your team come together in moments of stress like that, but you to come up, perform, and just kind of how it felt in that moment. Yeah, um, in the moment, I was pretty locked in, man. I- I wasn't really paying attention to what was going on. I was just locked in on trying to win the game um, because we were down 25 at halftime. So my whole focus was just trying to win the game. And then kind of after it kind of started to set in, uh, once I realized what we did, then we started getting to the interviews and people saying, you know, this is the Clippers' first time going to the Western Conference Finals. Um, You know, you almost had 40 in this game. Like, it's a pretty big deal. So I didn't realize till later on how big of a deal it was and how much it has changed my life. In that moment, like you just said, down 25, like how big that moment is, looking forward, do you see like, I kind of, have you taken that lesson into like the way that you approach the game now going forward? Like you see yourself kind of, you know, there's no there's no comeback you can't come back from. How has that kind of like changed your game going forward from that moment? Yeah, for sure. That 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 is definitely one of the games that changed my mentality in terms of, you know, it's a long game when you're in it. You know, whatever happens in the first, second quarter doesn't really matter. Um, you know, it's really, you know, end of third, fourth quarter when things can really change. So uh, that game definitely opened up my eyes to a lot of different situations. 100%. I can see, I can see it. Cause that's, that's, I remember watching that series. That series was, was insane. So yeah. that, was, that was super crazy performance. Now I know Clippers have loaded up addition to John Wall. They're going to have a healthy Kawhi, healthy Paul George. What are you looking for? What can we expect from you and the team this off season and kind of what, um, how do you feel like you've improved since last season going into this next season? Um, well, individually, I feel like, you know, I've just been working on a lot of shooting, um, a lot of stuff off the dribble, a lot of catch and shoot situations, uh, just because a lot of people are going to be focusing on Kawhi and Paul, um, John Wall, Reggie, Marcus Morris, you know, those guys who score the ball really well. So I'm um, just, you know, focusing on my role and working on my role. And then as a team, you know, we've been doing a good job of staying in contact. Um, working out together, you know, making sure each other's getting better and just locked in for the season. So it should be exciting. I, I tell you what, I'll definitely be tuning in. I'm excited to see y'all just do work with a fully healthy team. That is, it's dangerous. It's looking scary over there. Now everybody's healthy and, and that's loaded up. So I'm, I'm waiting to see it too. I'm excited for it. Now, I've been talking about how you do on the court and everything that you contribute on the court, but you do just as much work off the court. So before we get into that, Community Voices will be donating 10000 to the Bridge Club of Greater Lowell. Tell me more about Lowell. You know, you're originally from there, from uh, Lowell, Massachusetts. No, yeah, Lowell, Massachusetts. Yeah. I always mess up on those two words. Massachusetts, I cannot say that to save my life. It's like a speech impediment every time. But 
how like how often do you kind of go home and like you know visit there and what do you what do you kind of have planned for your upcoming like trip there and stuff yeah so I, I go there probably like once or twice a year um I take one big trip there in the summers which I'm about to go on right now um and we kind of set up like a money tournament to where you know all the professional players up and down the east coast fly into the city um and play for 20k and it's about eight teams you know battling so we kind of do that right before I, I do my camp so it's kind of like a, a whole week for us in, in in the city to where you know we're bringing stuff to the city you know whether it's you know you know games action whatever it is you know we just try to bring as much as we can to the city um you know let people recognize that there's a lot of talent out of Lowell um you know whether it's musically you know artists uh athletes whatever it is you know we have a lot of talent in the city so uh, we're just trying to bring a lot of outside people there and that's just basically what we focus on just going back home and doing a you know a bunch of stuff I love that because it's always important to go back home. It's always important, especially to go back and kind of give the city something like, you know, a lot of people like they, they, you know, they move out and they forget about their city or they, you know, sometimes we, we feel certain ways about our hometown, but it is very important where we can. So how can we go back and give to the city? Somebody's always watching. Somebody's going to always kind of need what we're able to give in a positive way. Entertainment, those kind of things do a lot of people and somebody's always watching. So that's extremely important to to do. So that that, that work is is yeah, I salute that work for sure, hundred percent. Appreciate that. And speaking of that work, um, how did you get involved with the Bridge Club, Greater, greater Lowell? Um, so the Bridge Club is you know basically a re rehabilitation center that you know does a great job in the community on you know getting people back on track, getting the people's feet back under them. Um, I know a few people have, who have been through the process. And uh, for me, it was my best friend that passed away a year ago um, due to, you know, an overdose. And, um, you know, he was kind of connected with, you know, the rehabilitation process and trying to go through that and just, you know, didn't, you know, succeed in that area. So that's just me, you know, wanting to give back and, you know, kind of give all the proceedings to them just so they can, you know, you know, do a good job of helping people out going forward. I love it. I love it. I'm I'm sorry to hear about your loss, but it, it it is beautiful to to still hear that you know like how much that has affected you, has touched you, and how you want to make sure that you know you continue to impact people who may be going through something similar as, as he was or she he or she was as well. So that's I, I love that work. I know I do the same. I try to do the same for my friends too, because mental health and all those kind of things play a big role into that kind of stuff. So I know it's important to kind of touch on and give back and help out wherever we can for those around us and those we don't know. So. I, I love and appreciate that work. And I want to I want to rewind on one thing. I said 10K to the Bridge Club. It's 15K. My apologies for, for dumbing the money down. It's yeah, yeah, a little more money. Definitely oh. helps. <laughs> 100%. 100%, man. Well, look, I know you're busy moving around. We just talked about it earlier. I appreciate your time very much. And I, I mean it a thousand percent when I say I'm looking forward to, to, to seeing the damage that y'all do on that conference this season. I know it's going to be crazy and I'm just excited to watch. So I appreciate you joining and um, thank you, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been fun. Of course, man. Until next time, we'll see y'all.